Hey guys, so I want to come up here and make another quick video. Um, this one is going to be fairly quickly because of the fact that um, the information that I want to share, I'm just going to notate it here um, in the video, but then I'm going to leave some links down below in the description box to a documentary and then also some more information that you can read up on to learn more about what I'm talking about and go, goes in further detail. Um, but I want to talk about the woman you see here on the screen before you. Her name is Katoa. She's a young Koi San woman. <clears throat> Or Koi. Um, she is believed to be the mother um, of the of founding the Afrikaans language. And for those who may not know, Afrikaans is a language spoken in South Africa that is a mixture of Dutch and then also Koi. Um, and she is the founder of that, you know, certainly believed to be the founder of that because of the fact that when she was a little girl, I think about 11 years old, or maybe somewhere between 9 and 11, Dutch settlers came into her area of west of South Western Cape, South Africa, during the 1600s. And um, they, for some reason, I'm not really sure as to how that ended up being, um, but she ended up moving in with some Dutch people. I don't know if she was a kidnapped, um, you know, victim, or if she actually went on her own free will and they promised her different things. I'm not really sure. But somehow she ended up growing up with these women, these people, and she lived in the house. And, um, oh yeah, he says 11 years old here. Yeah. She ended up living in the house with these people. And um, she ends up learning how to speak, speak Dutch, obviously, because she lived with the Dutch. They taught her um, Dutch and things of that nature. And so the Dutch will often go back and want to... Um, negotiate different things with her people because she was also the uncle, I mean, the niece, I believe, to the um, the Khoisan tribal leader at that time. So she had connections with the Dutch and she also had definitely had connections with the Khoi. And so the Dutch and the Khoi would go back and forth negotiating things. And so she learned both languages so that she can be able to communicate. And oftentimes languages, um, they, the two languages begin to blur together and they will create new words so that they can both kind of speak and you know, understand each other. And um, so that's where the language of Afrikaans came from. Now, if anyone doesn't also know that uh, the Khoi people, I definitely believe are, are Israelites. They suffer some of the same things that we suffer here in the States and then our people around the world as well. Um, I'm not going to read through all of this, but I'm going to leave this link in the description box as well. This is an article that I just found um, just now, and it talks about the Khoi San and how they were... Um, you know, part of the Bantu expansion, which a lot of people believe that that Bantu expansion was actually the Hebrew migration or the Israelite migration after the Roman massacre in the AD. Um, also, as for some of you who may not know or may not um, have heard this before, our people that when we left Israel, we did not just go to West Africa. Um, like a lot of us are very privy to know today. Um, like, you know, West Africa, meaning like Nigeria, Ghana, Togo, Benin, um, Liberia, Senegal, uh, all those Sierra, Sierra Leone, those regions, countries over there. Yes, there's a high population of us over there, Mali. There's a lot of us over there, but we also have our people that went down south. And the way we did that is that we went on the backside of Saudi Arabia, crossed over the Red Sea, you know, once we got to Yemen, came back into what is called, you know, known as the modern um, continent of Africa, whatnot. And continue to travel on down and this process would have taken at least a, at least two years or so because of the, the mass migration of people that we had um there were elderly people traveling that need to rest there were women that were pregnant that need to rest and give birth and then wait for their child to be of age for them to be able to travel some more um, it was a large amount of people and also if you, if you remember our um our our ancestors uh, exodus out of egypt that was an 11 day journey that turned into 40 years because of disobedience but originally it was an 11 day journey and um that you know we went from egypt to israel and it's those countries are actually landlocked together um so if you can imagine walking right next door from a state that's bordering or a country that's bordering um you know where you live now in your current state or country whatever and that take 11 days imagine going all the way down the coast of africa um down to the tip here so this article here you know they see that you see that they were called crazy names by the bush people bushmen i mean by the dutch people they were called bushmen hot and tight you know just like us they were nicknamed they were named derogatory names like they call us you know the n-word i don't want to say because i don't want to get flagged they call us nigga uh monkey uh blackie tar baby uh coon um all kinds of craziness as you can see these people here were called the same thing and also sarah bartman she was of this tribe as well <clears throat> 
And then I want to briefly jump here. It says they suffered a genocide at the hands of Europeans and Bantu peoples. Um, and yet I'm not saying that everyone that's Bantu are um, of Hebrew uh, lineage or Israelite lineage. Um, there are some people that will tell you that they're Bantu, but they're not Israelite at all. Okay, that's fine and well. But anyway, um, they suffered a genocide at the hands of the Europeans and Bantu peoples. There are reports that during the last 10 years of the Dutch, Indi Dutch East India Company's rule, 1795, 2,500 Bushmen were killed, 669 captured, and 276 colonists of Koi Koi uh, slain. And again, also, when I did my DNA test, I definitely had some of this in me as well. Um, small amount from the small amount that they um, extracted from my DNA um, and tested, but at the same time, nonetheless, this definitely pulled up. Um, so this has a lot of information in here, but I just wanted to, um, I'm not going to read through all, I just want to highlight some, th some things just in case people were um, confused or didn't know who they were or what they had actually suffered. And if you go through my video page, you'll see a video that I did a few months back um, talking about the, um, the Namaka and the uh, Herero genocide, which um, is not necessarily Koi people specifically, but they are in the same area as the Koi people and they suffered um, just as bad with the Germans down there. So anyway, uh, I think I'm going to end that there, but this is Kratoa. I'm going to leave the description box to her video down below, and I would ask that you please watch it. It's very, very, very interesting. I had not heard of her. I just kind of stumbled upon it um, a few well, months ago now, a couple of months ago now. And um, I was very great, grateful and glad that I did because it's so informative and very, very richful information and fulfilling information. So um, yep, this is her here. And uh, I think I'm going to end that there. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, talk to you later. Shalom.